to give thanks for his life, to commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit his body to be buried, and to comfort one another in our grief. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything that you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to invite Dan Boy's brother-in-law, Ian, to come and give the eulogy and to pay tribute to Dan Boy. For those inside and outside the church, for those watching online, my name is Ian. I am Dan Boy's brother in law and Jack's husband of seven years. On behalf of the family, we appreciate that you are here today to celebrate the life of our dearly beloved Danbury. I am certain everyone here today has been touched by Dan Boy's amazing spirit and kind heart. And we are grateful that we can come together to pay our respects to this wonderful man. The display of affection and volume of tributes we have seen over the last few weeks are a true and lasting testament to the life of Dan Boy and a reflection of all those around him. I am not here to speak of my personal memories of Dan Boy, nor am I going to attempt to share yours, but I do have a few funny stories from his mum. Dan Boy entered the world 32 years ago, wanting to make himself heard. Dan Boy played up for two years screaming and wailing during every waking hour, 24-7, non-stop. He drove his family wild, but after his baby brother Jack was born, he eventually calmed down and then started to terrorise Jack. Dan Boy was accident prone from the moment he could walk. From a very early age, he would be climbing anything that was bigger than him. On this particular occasion, he decided to climb all over a lorry. Screams could be heard. Dan Boy had ripped all his leg open. He was immediately rushed to hospital and his injuries were so bad the doctor had to sew his leg up with a needle and thread. A few years later, he was playing with his best friend, Paul Smith, when all of a sudden he cut the top of his finger right off. After a trip to Lister Hospital, where he stayed overnight, he had his finger sewn up and with only a matter of days later, he was again climbing, throwing himself off tractors and driving his quad bike. Later, in his growing years, his mum received a phone call from Cheshire School to say that Dan Boy had a coin thrown in his eye, by accident, by some boy on the landing above. Another trip to the hospital, and 30% of his eyesight was lost, and weeks of worry and blindness for his mum. Dan Boy wasn't born to go to school, he was born to be outdoors. He practically lived on Fletcher's, his granddad's yard, and he loved being around Whitehaven, his granddad's wife's yard. His bedroom was full of chickens and baby goats, and in his yard lived his pigs. He loved his pigs. He loved them with all his heart. 
He knew he was fattening them up to be slaughtered. He was so proud when they went to be slaughtered, to be made into sausages, pork chops, but would he eat them? No. He loved his food, but he would not eat his pigs. Growing up with his cousins, alongside with his fishing trips with his granddad Wade, they would spend every summer holidaying at the New Forest. The New Forest and the New Forest Show hold many happy memories for all the family, including the times when Dan Boy would wake himself up at 6am to walk down to Farmer John's milking parlour to milk the cows. One afternoon, Alice received a phone call that every parent dreads. Mrs. White, please can you come and collect your son from school for he has been expelled. Alice runs down to Goff's to find out what Dan Boy has been up to. Only this time, his mum and dad were immensely proud of him. Some boys had been picking on Jack, so Dan Boy simply punched the offender out with a single punch. <laughs> then he punched his teacher, <laughs> knocking him out, followed by pushing the head teacher, Dr. Percy, right to the floor. As I mentioned earlier, Dan Boy hated being at school. He had developed anger management issues, so therefore had a special teacher assigned to him to give him some one-to-one -one attention. Well, this lady didn't know what to do with him. Alice was at her wit's end, but this lady took the time to understand Dan Boy and found the only way to help him. She simply bought him fishing books and sneaked in the occasional McDonald's, and it worked. He eventually calmed down. Alice was being driven to despair with the bureaucracy at Goff School, and after months of campaigning and challenging the school's committee, she won the right for Dan Boy to be enrolled at Cable Manor College to study forestry where at last he was happy and became settled within days of arrival. With all that he had learned from Capel Manor, his dad, from both his granddads, and Basil, one of his greatest forestry mentors, he was on the right path to build himself a successful career and always said how much he loved his job. However, he still loved getting himself into mischief, and the following couple of years were probably his most troubled. We all know about Dan Boy's gambling adventures, and how his mum had to visit every bookies in Hertfordshire to have him barred from every shop. Indeed, Johnny, his nights are loose on the goose at Hartford House. <laughs> The years of his mum walking the streets searching for Dan Boy and all the trouble he brought to his mum's front door. But during these years, he became one of the most popular and loved young men in Hertfordshire. Sadly, in August 2011, during the London riots, it went suddenly downhill for Dan Boy, when Dan Boy needed to see what was happening he needed to be heart in the heart of the action. He just couldn't resist. Well, him and his mates went to see what these riots were all about. Dumbledore, with his inquisitive mind, needed to know what was going on behind the big metal shutters of this particular shop. So what did Dumbledore do? Popped his head under the shutters in front of a CCTV camera. What followed was a short stretch in prison with a judge ruling. If you hadn't have been so nosy, if you'd have stayed back and just watched what was going on like your mates did, we wouldn't be here today. And I wouldn't be issuing this sentence. He learned from this lesson. He learned some positive lessons from his time in prison. He then repositioned himself. 
and on his return to the real world, he threw himself into his career and into the waiting arms of his true love, Victoria. Danboy, as we know, loved his food. But what he loved the most was Jack's Sunday lunches. Jack and I moved from central London to where? To Buntingford. And when in Buntingford, Danboy would insist on most Sundays that Jack cook not only himself, but the whole family a Sunday lunch. But Danboy would insist on buying the meat and the veg and he would insist on eating the crackling the moment the meat came out. He just couldn't play, just like his dad. Dan Boy loved the high life and the best of the best. Him and Jack would find the best hotels, the best restaurants, the best tea rooms. Once Dan Boy had discovered a new tea room, a baker's or a butcher's, it would be visited every other day for weeks. It was just his way. Jack loved finding new hotels and restaurants for Danboy and for Victoria and Danboy to experience. It was one of their ways of caring and sharing for each other. That's for the now. <coughs> the last four years have been the best years for Danboy with the birth of Tommy. And more recently with Teddy. Those boys are the living embodiment of Danboy. Victoria and Danboy were inseparable for the last 11 years. Tommy, Teddy, and Victoria became Danboy's world. Every waking moment of Danboy's life was dedicated to his family to provide them with love, support the best food, holidays, toys, and of recent, the blue car that Thomas, Tommy specifically asked for, Dan Boy's dream car, the range. Throughout his life, Dan Boy never went without. He adored his family, and he had the biggest group of friends ever, many with lifelong friendships. Well, I could go on for hours and hours with endless amounts of happy memories and amusing stories of Dan Boy, but sadly, we just don't have the time. So with the last few stories in mind, I have attempted to summarise what Dan Boy would want to say in front of you here today, in what I'm calling my version of Do Not Stand By My Grave and Weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep, for I am not there. To my Victoria, I am the wind that gently blows your hair. I am the leaves on the trees outside your window. I am with you when you are feeding the boys. I am watching over you when you rock them to sleep. I am with you when you drive the car as I watch over you and keep you safe. I am with you when you're shopping for food, watching that you're buying the best quality with the best dates possible. I am with you always and forever, watching over you, caring for you, and the boys, I will never leave your side. To my boys, my sons, my everything. Look out for the rabbits, watch out for the squirrels, for I am there. Look to the sky, look through the clouds, for I am there. 
Be kind to the butterflies, the bees and the field mice, for I am there. I am your soul, your pulse, your every heartbeat. I am in your future, I am in your every dream. Take care of your mum, for I love her. I love her deeply and dearly. Respect her, listen to her, do as you are told. For she will guide you, as I would do, as we would do. I will always love you, I will always love her. For you are mine, my family. To my mum, to my dad. As the sun rises in the morning, I am there. As the moon fades, I am there. Mum, keep making me stews, keep my post on one side, keep me alive in the hearts of my boys, for I am there. Dad, Teach my boys the ways of the outdoors, for this is where I am. Teach them about life, teach them to stand up for themselves, teach them respect, for I am there. Visit me at Beaumont, keep it tidy, see it grow, for I am there. Together, plant me a tree, Watch over this tree, watch it grow, tend to it, make it strong, for I am there. Bib your horn as you drive past a fish and chip shop, for I am there. Keep smiling, be strong, and take care of your grandchildren. That's all I ask of you. Do for them as you did for me, for I am there. To my sister Celia, you have made me very proud. Your mini, your baby Sloan, is a true credit to you and Tommy. I am the blood in your baby Sloan, I am part of her soul. I am part of her cheeky side. I am part of her tantrums. For I am there. I will always be with you. Always be part of Sloane's life. I am, all, I am with you always. For I am there. To my Jack, you will always be my Julie. I will always terrorise you, but I will always be there. Watch over my boys, treat them well, do for them as I would do. Give them my soul, give them my heart, teach them the right way. Do this for me. I trust you. You have got this. I will always be there to support you, guide you, never feel alone. Call out to me, Jack. Say my name, for I will be there. To my brother-in-law, Ian. Watch out for that text, that random phone call, for the overdue parking ticket, for I will be there. Watch over my family, look after them just as I would do. Be the best uncle possible to my boys. Read to them, listen to them. Together with Uncle Jack, lead them in the right direction. Teach them how to love as deeply as you love my brother, for I will be there. 
to my nan, Grandad White, Grandad Wade, to my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my nieces, my nephews, and my treasured in-laws. Look at the trees and watch them grow. Watch the leaves turn green. Watch the leaves fall, for I am there. Listen to the birds in the morning, the owls in the evening, for I am there. Walk in the fresh air, surrounded by the world, for I am there. Walk into the wild weather, walk into the rain, walk into the storm, for I am there. When sat around the table for Sunday roast, I am there. When you're at the hall shows, chatting, catching up, eating and drinking, I am there. Wherever I was, I am there. And finally, to my friends, my mates, my pals, and to my lads, when you are hungry, I am with you. I want you to always drive the extra 30 miles to find the best sausage roll, the best rib of beef, the freshest of seafood, for I will be there. Wherever you see top quality food, food that I would adore, I will be there. Always buy from Pierce's, say hello to my main head, for I will always be there. When in the car, rev the car, rev it till the engine blows, make me some noise, for I will be there. Do not stand by my grave and weep. I am not there. I did not die. Dan Boy had every given opportunity promoted his business or left his cards wherever he could. So I'm going to take this opportunity on behalf of Dan Boy to say DW Tree Specialists and Sons are open for business. No job is too small or too large. With 16 five star reviews online, just give us a bell and all will be well. Rest in forever peace, Dan Boy. Thank you, Ian, for those wonderful memories of Dan Boy and also for the beautiful words in your poem. Thank you so much. At this point of the service, we were going to be listening to the Notorious B.I.G. with Juicy. Unfortunately, sorry Victoria, the words weren't quite appropriate to be played in the church. But please, when you get home, those of you at home on the live stream, when this service is over, please play it in your homes, loud and proud, as you remember Dan Boy. Instead, we're going to listen to well, an appropriate song, because I think Dan Boy was, was the wind beneath many people's wings. So we remember Dan Boy as we listen to Bette Midler, Wind Beneath My Wings.
Victoria has asked me to read three poems mm -hmm. from, from, from her and from Tommy and Teddy. First poem from Victoria to my dad. Thank you for all the memories that we have shared, the tears and the laughter you always <coughs> cared. Eleven years spent together, my childhood sweetheart. No matter what life threw at us, we was never that far apart. To my, to my children's wonderful dad, I have no words to say. Every time I feel alone and sad, you're with us every step of the way. We share two beautiful boys. I promise to give them the best, to spoil them with kisses and love. They're different from the rest. You'd say our boys are creep to everyone you'd see. They are half you and half me. We were the best little team. The W Tree specialists meant everything to you. I promise you the boys will carry this on through. Although your time was not ready to leave us all behind, heaven needed an angel, someone so beautiful, caring and kind. This is not goodbye, damn boy, let me tell you. This is see you later. We will see you soon. Love, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. Those words, they must be so difficult to write. And now poems from Tommy and Teddy. Daddy, for the puddles that I fell in, was the scraped muddy knees, to the days that you gave me the climbing of trees, for the wisdom, the love, and calm inspiration, to the safety of home, a solid foundation. Thank you for the memories that will stay in my head to the scaring of monsters from under my bed. For the joy in my moments, the arms when I'm sad, from the luckiest child that calls you my dad. Ah, dad. This is a poem for you, my dad. I'm a big bit naughty and a little bit bad. Of course I am. I am your son. You will live on in me. That makes us one. With you in my life, no two days were the same. Everything to you was just one big game. You'd pop to the shop for my magazine. Daddy, I'm so like you. I'm OCD, please. Family days at the zoo and the farm. You will always be my right arm. Off to the park you'd push me on the swing. I'd always look up to you as you are my king. Now it's my turn, your little Ted. I'm so thankful for all the cuddles that we had in bed. The day you brought me home you was, you was proud. You told Tommy to be quiet, not to be loud. Home from work, we'd play on the floor, but changing my nappy, that's mummy's job for sure. We thank you, Daddy, for all you have done. You left us your legacy, and with that, we have won. And both of those poems come with great love from Tommy and Ted. We come to our reading from the Bible, Psalm 20. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That psalm is probably one of the most famous verses from the Bible. You may remember singing a hymn in school called The Lord is My Shepherd. It wasn't one of my favourites, but, but we sang it lots in school. Maybe if you watch The Vicar of Dibley, you'll know it more these days as the theme tune from that programme. But it's a song that was written thousands and thousands of years ago, probably four, four to five thousand years ago. And it's a song about a journey. It's a song that the ancient Israelites would sing as they went on their journey from the city of Jericho to the city of Jerusalem. They would be travelling to Jerusalem to worship, to worship God in the temple there. Now there were two ways that you could take that journey. You could take the safe route, the flat route, the route across the plain. That route took two days. Maybe someone like Dan would choose that route because he enjoyed being in the great outdoors. But there was the quicker route, the route that took half a day. This route went through a valley, not like the valleys that we see here in the Lee Valley, but in Israel these valleys are steep. The walls are rocky. There are caves all along the valley walls and the valley path clings to the valley wall about three quarters of the way up. There are rocks, it is dry, it is dusty. And if you were to stumble, well, you can imagine. In the caves hide hid bandits who would be there to rob you on your journey. Yes, the journey was quick, but it wasn't safe. So when you arrived at the temple, you would sing this song with great gratitude and thanks that you had arrived to your destination safe and well. The temple in ancient Israel was the greatest and biggest building you have ever seen, built with gold and bronze, and there would be a banquet laid before those who had come to worship God there. You would feel safe. You would know that you had made it. When we read this scripture in the 21st century, it reminds us of life, of life being a journey. Now actually, I did say that maybe Dan Boyd would have chosen the easiest path, but after listening to Ian's words, I think we know that's not true. I think we know that for love of his family, to get the best for Victoria and his boys, to be the son and the brother and the brother-in-law that he truly wanted to be, he didn't always choose the easy path. He worked hard to provide for his boys. I would love to be able to buy a Range Rover if my boy asked for it. But that's Dan Boy's legacy. He didn't take the easy path in life. He took the path to build up his business and worked so hard. He took the path to go to Cable Manor and learn everything he needed to learn to build up his business so that one day he could provide for his family. I was asked on Sunday when I went to pray a blessing over Dan Boy's coffin, why was he taken? question we're all asking today, isn't it? If we're honest. The only answer I could give with any great honesty is I don't know. I wish I did. I wish I had an answer that I could give you that would make this pain and this, this, this turmoil go away. But I can't. And I'm truly sorry for that. All I can say is Danny's journey was shorter than many others with people's. 
but he, he filled, filled so much of life while he was on that journey. So today, as we come to say goodbye to Daniel, as we come to pay our final respects, we know it's not really goodbye, because we will see him grow in his boys, and we will each take a piece of him in our hearts. As you leave this place today, and for those of you watching on the live stream, <clears throat> as you come together, walk with one another on your life's journeys, support one another, uphold one another, be the family that Dan Boy loved so much, be there for each other. So Dan Boy, I'm afraid I never got to meet you in this life. You sound like an amazing man. I look forward to meeting you when we all join you in heaven one day in the future. Amen. We will now listen to a piece of music that I think encapsulates the shortness of Dan Boy's life. Elton John, Handel, Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that you have made us in your own image and given us gifts and talents with which to serve you. We thank you for Dan Boy, the years that we shared with him, the good we saw in him, the love we received from him. Now give us strength and courage to leave him in your eternal care confident in the promise of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We come to the point in the service where we now commend Danny to the mercy of God, where we ask God to take that boy into his arms, into his protection and his love. So let us commend our voice to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust our boy to your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. May God, in his infinite love and mercy, bring the whole church, living and departed, in the Lord Jesus to a joyful resurrection and to the fulfilment of his eternal kingdom. Amen.